The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Project Day likes movies. Do you like movies? Do you remember that movie uh, with Denzel Washington and he's the gangster? What's the name of that movie? American Gangster, right? And he's talking to that uh, the other gangster, but he's the Italian gangster. And he says, so what? Your success took a shot at you. You can have friends. My friend came through to the studio, yes. And she said, Project Daddy, you would look so fly if you had these glasses on your eyes. And I'm like, for real? Those some mighty white ass goddamn glasses. And so I put them bitches on and I won't look in the mirror, right? And Project Daddy felt just like motherfucking Fable. I had to like start snapping in this motherfucking shit, snapping and goddamn popping. And I just wanna say, I salute, thank you to my motherfucking friends. It's okay to have friends. But for some reason, we wanna make goddamn enemies. I'm talking to a different friend, yes? And we're having a a casual conversation via text. I don't even know how to motherfucking text. My fingers work so goddamn slow. Project Daddy was born in a fucking tangible age with knobs and shit. I like to touch things. I like to touch things. I was about to say them other types of things, but I like to feel them. I just don't want to see them. You understand? It's a very important thing for me to be able to feel them. And so I'm having this text conversation and somehow I say something about an iPhone. And this person happens to use an iPhone and then all of a sudden, like the next five minutes of text conversation was all about the iPhone. And I was like, shit, nigga, we just wasted five minutes of time talking about a motherfucking product. I don't give a fuck about no Tim Cook. Nigga, fuck an iPhone. I just got to be able to communicate. You hear me? I have no brand loyalty, no brand affiliation. The only thing that I stand up for is my motherfucking friends. And who are my friends? I want to make so many goddamn friends. I done met motherfuckers from all around the world, yes? From like, because I was in the military. So when, you, when you're on a boat, you're just surrounded by motherfuckers who you don't like, right? And you have to work with sons of bitches from places who have ideas in their mind about you. They don't like you very much, but you ain't got shit to do with that because we got to lift these goddamn bombs. It's very important, right? Because when you're in a position, when you have to do the work, like I ain't worried about like what the fuck this nigga was talking about earlier. I'm worried about getting the work done. And right now, this one of these most trying times in American history, yes? It's most important for us to have friends. It's okay to be successful. But you know what? What fucks me up is when broke folks take shots at broke folks. Listen here. Everybody in in America understands that you have to have a collaborative effort to get shit done. That's the most important thing. Rich folks protect rich folks. Now, I know y'all watch the news, yes? I know you watch the news. If you consume any any media, you heard about this T.I. and Tiny shit. And then when they started talking about this T.I. and Tiny shit, all of a sudden, every uh, urban or black podcast or show, they started talking about sex. And I started hearing about threesomes and menage a trois. Do you know why they were doing this? Any show. Go look up a fucking show. And they were trying to defend their class. They're like, oh, shit, if they come for T.I. and Tiny, they finna come for me, too, because I just had a motherfucking menage a trois last week. And if if one of those people gets paid some money, they finna come for my ass. That's class protecting class. That's rich folks protecting rich folks and protecting their behavior. You know what? Broke folks ain't got no money, but they will have the audacity to tell another broke person how to spend their motherfucking money. Hey, hey, nigga. I understand that you want to save and shit like that, but nigga, you like a half a penny more richer than me, broke nigga. What the fuck is you talking about? You understand? And so when I say that you can have friends, goddamn, we have to make friends, especially when it comes to our specific class. Everybody who makes less than $120,000 a year, right? If you have to clock in and you're working for somebody, you are in the working class. And if your job goes away, see ya, a bye-bye, motherfucker, you finna be destitute and goddamn homeless hoping hoping that someone else says i think you're a good candidate for my company and you sir you sir can come and you qualify to make that hundred thousand dollars again we gotta stop shooting at broke folk you hear me the only way that we gonna change our stars all these uh working class people in america the economically challenged folks in america is if we stop hating on each other, you understand? If we start negotiating and having collaborative, collective talks about how we want to move forward in America, yes? Niggas don't know what the fuck a union is because union language is so goddamn scary. But a union is solidarity. And me saying, even though I don't like you, motherfucker, I need you to increase increase my wages. 
And right now, one of the most divided times in American history, I'm hearing motherfuckers who'd rather argue about a goddamn iPhone or some other trivial social goddamn thing like me being black or some shit or like where I grew up at. You'd rather talk about who the fuck I'm fucking rather than me and you working together to get this goddamn money. And Project Dad don't understand no shit like that. When the fuck did personal feelings become more important than putting money in your goddamn pocket. I'm lost and confused. And the only way you get to a place like that is if you become hopeless and you don't think that you can get to no motherfucking money. But Project Dad is here to tell you that ever since the beginning of goddamn the working class in America, they figured out that when workers work with workers and say, nigga, even though I don't like the borough you come from or the city you come from or goddamn the food that you eat, some bitch, I need your ass in solidarity right next to me, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, so we can walk up to the son bitch boss and say, listen here, Tim Cook, <laughs> listen here, Jeff Bezos, listen here, Mark Zuckerberg, listen here, whoever the motherfucker employer, employer is, you finna give me my motherfucking fair wage or else, and then the or else comes when the, when the customers support the workers, they're like, hell yeah, hey, fuck that iPhone, I ain't buying that shit. If the American worker ain't getting paid a fair wage for the motherfucking product, then I ain't finna buy that motherfucker. That is American solidarity. And you are the greatest American alive. And I'm just over here saying that it's okay for you motherfuckers to have friends. Project Daddy has friends. They bring me glasses to protect me from the blight, from the bright ass lights. And I want to thank you for being the greatest American alive. I want to thank you for your service. I want to thank you for listening to me. But I want to really appreciate you and say I thank you and I love you for working together and sticking with each other and protecting each other. So when someone says that Project Daddy had a menage a trois, I want y'all to go on y'all Twitters and your TikToks and your Instagrams and tell them other motherfuckers that y'all had menage a trois too so they don't come kicking my door and be like, Project Daddy was taking uh, cookies. Uh, the greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.